Hello, everybody. Um, this is Diane Tynatalist, and um, I'm going to start a new segment today. It's going to be called Bedtime Talk, and it's going to be about child-free and antinatalist issues and uh, possibly including issues regarding uh, overpopulation, you know, the climate, and um, that sort of thing. So, anyway, the title of today's <laughs> um, talk, hey, sweetie, this is my little chihuahua, and she's like, she's really old now, and she's really sweet, but anyway, um, so the title of today's video is um, the empowering of women, and um, so I'm going to start off by saying that to remain child-free is the best kind of empowerment um, for a woman, and this should be encouraged. This should be encouraged by her parents. Um, her parents should be um, encouraging her, their, their children, their girls, to become well-educated and to seek knowledge and to postpone um, seeking a mate and postpone any marriage and to, hey, sweetie, postpone um, and prevent any birth, any, any child's birth. And when you prevent a child's birth, you are preventing their future suffering, their harm. You prevent them from having any pain in life, any suffering, catching any disease, um, losing friends, um, getting bullied. And you prevent you know, devastating illnesses or trauma. And <clears throat> so, first and foremost, you should be thinking about your children when you do want to reproduce because they don't have, or they don't have a pr the privilege of denying their birth. You do not ask their consent. So, it is in every woman's best interest to prevent the birth of children. And it is in a woman's best interest to prevent a birth because they can explore their own growth, their own growth as an adult. And, you know, you can't explore... Um, growth and nurturing of your own soul if you're busy watching cartoons and wiping sticky fingers. So, um, it's best to promote your own growth as an adult and to prevent the harm of your own children through bringing them into existence. Now, um, when a woman reproduces, she is passing on her mate's genetic material. And she's creating her partner's DNA trophy. And I recommend that all women refrain from doing that. Because this does not empower you at all <clears throat> to pass on your partner's um, genetic code. Because you are primarily a receptacle for his genetic material and passing on his DNA and <clears throat> his um, genes and, you know, his personality and his physical traits. And I recommend that you prevent pregnancy at all costs, even if that re um even if that means refraining from sexual intercourse, PIV. <laughs> and, and secondly, 
I recommend that you, um, um, you know, safely and, um, quickly dispose of any fetuses, embryos. I recommend aborting every man's fetus or embryo, whichever stage of the pregnancy it might be, because by you carrying his potential child, you are procrastinating your life. You are putting your life at risk and you're putting your future child's life at risk, at great risk, because your child does not consent to existence. And women, women do all of the reproductive duties. Nature has ensured that women carry the entire reproductive burden. The pain, the risks, the inconvenience. And the reason why women have not succeeded and progressed as far as men have become throughout the ages is because women have the reproductive burden, which affects them every month and the, primarily the majority of their lives. And pregnancy is very taxing. And the delivery and um, lactation and nurturing of a child is very, very taxing. Um, it is oppressive for women. And men are exempt from this. So men are, they're getting a free ride when you carry on their genetic code into the next generation. I mean, women are, I guess, in essence, guinea pigs, um, just receptacles for, you know, a man's embryo, fetus, baby. And women, um, you know, I'm, I'm very pro-female, very feminist, and I don't believe you can be a feminist and have children. And for, for you women who have had children and are very disappointed in the way that your husband or partner has treated your, ch your children, um, there's a lot of information out there on um, men abandoning their families and, and even worse. Look at the Scott Petersons and the Chris Watts of the world. Both of those men um, were actually labeled covert narcissists. Both of them killed their wives with their unborn child, and Chris Watts killed his remaining two daughters, um, already born daughters. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of women out there who... I have, have had children with men who did not take care of their families and men who wanted sex, wanted the orgasm, wanted, um, you know, the pleasure, but they did not fulfill their obligations as men, fathers, parents, um, even decent people. There is a Facebook group and it's called, um, thriving after abuse or something of that nature. And I recently became aware of it. And um, I'm really glad. I'm really glad I, that I became cognizant of this particular group because um, there was a woman today. I, a lot of these women have had children with um, passive aggressive narcissists and um, other types of malignant toxic narcissists and just bad men in general. But this particular woman had a, a son with a man, and the man was not taking care of 
of him, and I guess they had split up, and she saw his car seat at his mom's house, and it was just ditched. It was just left outside in the rain, and her ex-partner, husband, whatever he, he was, is now dating a woman with four children, and his car only has room for three seat belts, she said. So she was really worried about her son not being buckled in for safety. And it is truly pathetic, I, I believe, the, the links that, you know, women or men go through, go to, to discount and um, to dismiss their families, their original families. You know, I had a friend back in the 80s, her name was Dana, and she had a child, her first child was out of wedlock with a guy, and she um, was following him in the car, and he had a sports car like a Camaro at the 